sports uh, we do art and, and, mm -hmm. and you know literature from PNT is all about the arts uh, so we have a lot of diverse fans and other diverse uh, members so a lot I know for a fact that a lot of them will be interested in that um, do you where do you all you know jump off from from that Maybe you um, share. Wait to see it. Well, right now, the, all the photo shoots that we've done have been paid photo shoots by the client. Um, so pretty much everything on my website, uh, we did those photos just for who was in the photos, and then asked their permission if I could put them on my website to, just to have kind of a portfolio going. Um, so uh, we, for the Tropic of Cancer one, I didn't really have a platform. I, I have a lot of. I, I did these. Um, I don't know if I told you. In the past couple months, I started doing art parties um, where I would hold events and invite local artists in San Diego to put up their work, and, and we would all network to our friends to get them to come out so that we can and we have we would have bands and things like that, but just so that they would have kind of a, a platform where they could show their work. So when I kind of I did four of those parties and I kind of got into it and I was like I need to just do it for myself like I do my own stuff why don't I put my own stuff on the walls and have the party. So that's where I came up with, that was going to be my platform for the Tropic of Cancer shoe, but I just never, because it was such a such a close uh, a close tie between the Tropic of Cancer to Sekewa, um, I never actually got to the actual event. So I thought that, and Bianca came up with the idea yesterday, and I thought it was amazing that just to put it in the movie so I can have a kind of a double platform for for my own work. Um, and then... And then after that, I can put them up, put them up online for people to see and buy and all that good stuff. And then have limited edition signed by the cast and things like that. So there's, so we are creating platforms for ourselves. But yeah, it's definitely when I was doing the photography just for myself. It's a hard platform to get out there. And there's like you can do Redbubble and all that other stuff, but but there's nothing quite like having um, a demographic specifically that would enjoy your work. So. Yeah, I, I'm excited to get the Tropic of Cancer shoot out there because the shoot was absolutely amazing. I mean, the book is a narrative about Henry Miller's life when he lived in Paris, when he knew Anais Nin. Um, and um, so just to have Henry Miller uh, as a woman and as a black woman, it just became such an amazing, an amazing project. So um, I can't wait for people to see it. Songs interesting. Um, uh that comes to the exact point I'm, I, I want to ask you about, and that is a lot of a lot of people because of, of our first um, interview saw the sort of a uh, concept trailer that you 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 brought out, and so they were asking who the who the artist was. That actually of uh, the storyboards talking about. Yes, those actually are photographs that I um, put through Photoshop. In order to do it, because it was, I needed to put something out there. I um, want, I want. I'm not an artist, really. I have, I have a little bit of artwork that you can see on my website, um, where I actually used to sketch scenes from from different lesbian movies. So definitely send them all to that site to check them out. Um, I'm not, I'm not incredibly great in, by any means. So I did, I did what I do, and I took photographs, and from the photographs, I manipulated them to look like storyboards. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. <laughs> oh, and that's another thing too. The whole conversation about enhancement of photos and stuff like that are going around right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very legitimate. But I also think that if you use it, just like auto tunes, if you use it in the correct art form, it can yeah. it can be an art form as and that that stands on its own. And it, it um, definitely can. In my creative photography, I don't, like, Bianca and I have this fight all the time because I, I hate using Photoshop. Um, so the only time that I ever use Photoshop is if I'm taking headshots of people. And I know, you like, there's definitely a standard for certain kinds of photos that your eye says, this is what's right. So I will use it for those. But, like, the, the photos that I took of myself, the photos of uh, Donovan... Um, Tracy and um, and a couple of other people, they're all they all stand on their own. They're not photoshopped or anything. So when I and Tropic of Cancer shoot is not photo shoot, it's photoshopped. I don't like using it. I liked I, I'm a light manipulator, so um, so I try not to use that at any cost. I, I I try to do it analog while we're on set, and what I see in my camera is exactly what I want. So I try to do it that way. Um, but for that for those purposes, I, I really needed to update. I, I had. Um, our, our silly little promo video on there for maybe about 10 days and I was like I need to put something else out there 
and um, I think actually for the actual shoot, I will do a similar thing for the for the physical storyboards, just because it, it makes it a lot easier. Then you don't have to bring someone else in to do to do all this work that I can probably do in ten minutes, just just for storyboards. It's not only can we make the same platform I was telling you about the blog about bringing filmmakers together, but we could also throw in uh, maybe if they're po as popular on uh, uh, some artists. On, and some um, writers, because they all come full circle. I mean, every one of us either started as a photographer, a writer, uh, or, or, or something or the other, a performance artist or whatever, and have evolved into um, filmmaking. And uh, my and, and the knowledge of lighting and photography is so important when when uh, you're making a film, just because that's that's what it is. It's just it's just photographs going really fast so <laughs> um, so it's really important to have kind of the knowledge of lighting and I, I mean I was born and raised a lighting person and I'm still I still to this day I, I mean it's totally different doing lighting for concerts rather than doing lighting for films um, but it's still the, I'm, I'm more about the manipulation of the actual of the actual light and, and creating a world in front of me and then taking a photograph of that that's kind of how I like to work so how did you jump from there to photography um, I I started wanting to do short films and photography. Like I said, I did my first project when I was in college called A Dragon Named Sue, mm -hmm. um, which which now is just the footage is just the, that moody that moody blues music video. So I started do, wanting to do more on the photography side, and then went to film school, wanted to do more on that side. And then when I when I it came to actually getting a job, I got the job in live production, and I I fell in love with live production. I mean, I've I've worked on both. Uh, uh, sets for different things and live production and it's just like live production is just like this and I'm very much a person who I, I like to do everything myself so when when you're when I was on set it would be like I had asked I, I would be mostly like grip or electric and I would have to ask someone to ask someone to ask someone how this is done now when I'm at work doing a concert people are like okay here are my lights this is my set list this is my cue list make it happen and you have five hours so you just go in and you do it and I kind of got, I got so addicted to that adrenaline and work that I fell in love with that as far as, as far as work goes. Um, but I still kind of have that artistic craving inside myself in order to, to put out there what I, what's, what I have in my imagination, which I was kind of stifling for a while. And now I'm, now I'm getting back into it and realizing I'm like, oh man, like, I, I totally avoided this whole, this whole side of me for so long that I started becoming numb to, to the things that I that really uh, that really made me enjoy life, and since starting this project, I realized, oh my gosh, this is possibly the hardest and the easiest thing that I've ever done, because I, I'm working all the time and I'm trying to network and trying to do all these things that I'm not even I'm not even confident that I can get done. I know I'll get it done, but it's just like you have that like I've never done this before, so I don't know where I'm going to go from here. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never, but I've never been more satisfied with myself or more satisfied with staying up all night and working and and going being on Craigslist and 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 networking through Facebook and YouTube and all that other good stuff. So, so um, yeah, it's definitely. I forgot the question. <laughs> No, but actually, you were you were you were, you, were, you were actually you were going pretty pretty good, because um, they were talking about femininity in t uh, as opposed to lesbianism, and the fact that uh, femmes are not really taken as seriously as say uh, butched up um, butchies. In the um, lesbian community? Yes, in the lesbian community. So I think I think as far as myself goes, I I I've never identified with one side or the other. I mean, I've always been kind of a tomboy, and and I I literally I still pretty much wear the same clothes that I wore when I was you know 15 years old. And I just jeans and t-shirt. Like I I'm the same person, and and the important thing for me. And growing up in America, it's really like I've had. We all, well, many of us have uh, have issues with our own how we look and what how much we weigh and things like that. So uh, my main my main goal is to look in the mirror and be happy with myself, or and go out and be happy with myself, no matter what that is. And I try not to uh, conform to what people think of maybe my stereotype. I like, for instance, my movie. I will cast people that I 
see fit within myself. I mean, Anna Eisenman, this is, okay, I'll, I'll quote Anna Eisenman, who's one of my absolute favorite authors. Um, she says, we see things as we are, we don't see them as they are. Um, so as far as myself goes, I just try to do things that, that stay true to myself and and people who people who enjoy that are, are people who are similar. And I mean, there's always going to be a platform for for butch people to want themselves on on screen, and they'll do that, and and they'll and they'll start, and those will, those films and that art will be will be very popular within their community. But the 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 one thing that I just try to do amongst above everything else is to stay true to myself. And whether I have long hair, short hair, or just what makes myself happy and what makes me um, and uh, actually, and I stand has another quote that says, "If you make life toler tolerable for yourself." You make it tolerable for others. So you just have to be happy within yourself and do what you feel is right for yourself, and then the rest will come after that. Because because the most important thing is your own happiness. Because you can't can't be you you can't be like you can't be a part of this society and be totally unhappy with yourself. It just it just doesn't work. And I think that we have quite a few examples of of people who self destructed because of it. Um, so, so there's that. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 stereotypes have their place, but, but what we all, if we we're all true to ourselves, then, then we would all have what we need. <laughs> Indeed. Um, yeah. No, this is another question that seems to be fairly popular. Um, it's a two part. Yes. <laughs> They're so brave. They're giving two parts. <laughs> Yes, I, I tell you, I have a list of the questions right here. Um, <laughs> one is if you have a partner, and if you don't have a partner, what are the what are the attributes that you look for in a partner? <laughs> mm -hmm. I am single. Um, uh, happily, for the past nine months, I've been single. Um, I don't look for anything here or there as far as a partner goes. I I have. I'm incredibly idealistic and romantic at heart where I kind of, I, I believe this and I don't believe it at the same time. I just kind of think that when I meet the person that I'm supposed to be with, it'll, I'll know it and I'll be able to see it and touch it and taste it and, and it'll be, it'll just be that moment um, or, you know, that beginning. Um, I don't, I don't have a type. I, I, I like more girly girls. I like people who are similar to me. I'm only 5'1", so I prefer women who are taller than me. Um... So I, I don't have any physical attributes that I actually look for. I can I can name a few like actresses that I find are attractive, but that's that's about it. There, there's a whole wide scope of, of people who attract me. But right now I am incredibly happy being on my own. I'm finding out more and more that I am a special kind of person who needs a lot of space, and um, people don't really understand that when I need to lock myself away in the dark for two days so I can write. Um, so I feel like the next person that I date will have to have a, a good understanding of that and a similar and a similar schedule and lifestyle. I tried to date a woman who had like a nine to five type job and it never worked because nine to five Monday through Friday it's like I'm I'm my days off are Wednesday and Thursday and I tend to go to work at four o'clock at night when they're getting off work so it just doesn't it doesn't work in that way as well so. Um, there, there are things that I definitely look for, but I kind of feel like that when I, the next one is going to be the one that I'm going to put the most energy into, and it, I'm going to take more time and care um, being with them because of it's, it's just kind of I feel like I've wasted a lot of time with people who I really, I, I talked myself into um, these situations, and then I realized, okay, well, I, I talked myself into that, and it didn't end the way that I want to, so I'm just taking quite a bit more care now. Um, but as far as physical attributes, no, I don't have, I don't really have a type. I like red hair. <laughs> okay. Um, I suppose. Take to there. Um, <laughs> because, uh, the at the same time, like, I love, I love She Tall Chef and, and Lisa Ray and Jordana Brewster. I love all the, all those wonderful, beautiful women in all these movies as well, so. All these wonderful short women. Huh? I say all these wonderful short women. I know. I know. They have to be. I dated a girl that was. I, she was five nine, and I'm five one. And we would be walking down the street, and I'm just like, we're like holding hands. I'm going, this. I feel like I'm walking with my mom or something. Like, oh yay! She was just too tall. I, she was. She was an amazing woman, but just I. I never felt comfortable. Can you name your top? I'm gonna make it real easy on you. Can you name your top ten? Top ten. Yeah, your top okay. ten, your top ten, um, um... Okay, all-time favorite movies? 
No, 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 no! Not movies! Women! 